First of all, let's start. Who are you again? My, I am Anand Sanchevi, the head of marketing for IonQ. Okay. And uh, the company was founded in 2015 by uh, Jung Seng Kim, who is a CTO, and Chris Monroe, who is a chief science officer. Uh, like we've been developing the technology over the period of time. If, I, if you don't mind me walking you here, yeah. That is that is actually the core of our technology, the ion trap, okay. and that sits at the center of the computer. Okay. And that is what pretty much, when isolated and put in vacuum environments, ends up actually working with Activist to give us very complicated responses and computation responses. Right. And does this have to be in, on a very low temperature? No, this does not. This, this does is, not. There are multiple modalities in terms of quantum computing right now. And when I say modalities, it's like IBM has superconducting systems that look like a chandelier, but they are like artificial qubits. We have ion traps, which are not need room temperature. They actually use naturally occurring ions and, and like substances to you actually get much more higher fidelity in terms of the total, right. uh, like responses or computation that you're looking at. Right. Uh, the overall industry itself is developed and growing, where right now it is going from research and, and a lot more uh, effort is moving towards engineering and product activation. And we are seeing a lot of momentum by our customers who are looking at bigger problems, like for example, if you're trying to create a new drug, or if you're trying to uh, go into pharmacy, there's like certain solutions in terms of like cancer treatment or like a new uh, chemistry creation that hasn't happened yet is about to happen. Quantum computer can help you get to those computation states much faster than current supercomputers can. Okay. So what they are solving right now is smaller pieces of those problems that will actually lead to bigger solutions. But you, the entire industry is sort of going to have that big AI moment that we've just witnessed recently. Right. And uh, it's a matter of time. Right. And what we actually are working towards is building the entire ecosystem together with like as the hardware provider, then you're looking at like providing like talent services and like helping companies sort of build their entire ecosystem uh, for this quantum feature that is going to knock on our door in Can we talk a little bit about what you've introduced today? Sure. Yeah. Is this what it actually looks like? Yes. So this is, I think, at the scale of the individual you're looking at over right. here okay. in a data center environment. Okay. And when you have something like this, you're looking at multiple peripherals, but at the core of this system, and that's that, that is exactly chip. chip. Right. And that is powered and controlled by all the different systems that sit there. Right, so it's a big, let's say, use an old term, mainframe that's running a lot, of, a, a, a lot of data through it. Exactly. And your target audience? Our target audiences are, are a lot of like, uh, right now it's a lot of CTOs, CIOs who we work with at the enterprise level, but there's also governments and institutions that are working with. So what they are trying to do is build like buy one of our systems and then make an entire economy around it. So not only are you doing training programs, you're actually doing application development, you're allowing the entire community and the neighborhood to actually access the system. And that way you increase democratization of the system, but at the same time increase access too. Right. So a good example is like Bas Quantum Basel is an entity in Switzerland, which is right. a big entity. Like I think they have a whole, like a, a massive campus and they brought our system recently. And uh, both Forte, and then they also bought in the future system as well, Forte Enterprise and the future system. And uh, what they are doing is pretty much building that ecosystem. Right. And there are similar groups like that that get in conversations with, which will lead to a similar kind of. Is this actually installed in the University of Maryland? This one is getting built right now. And getting built. The expected at time is 2024, okay. and it will be built in our new manufacturing facility in Bothell, Washington okay. State. Right. Okay. Question I have: Are there any other universities that are building it? No, because like I think this is like we are a privately owned, like publicly created company, right? Uh, which spun out of UMD, like University of Maryland. Right. But uh, like uh, you're looking at a lot of university partnering with different companies to actually right. do the same. Okay. So how many machines are actually in the process of being installed right now? So we have three systems right now which are running, uh, and they're called Harmony, Aria, and Forte. Okay. Forte Enterprise, which is like more rack mountable data center integrated system, that is coming out in 2024. And right. then there's Tempo, which will be released in 2025. Uh, and that is uh, a smaller form factor with more capacity, and uh, that is going to launch and be accessible. To if I was a startup company and I wanted to access and be creative in using your system, yeah. what kind of startup company would I be? Okay. Uh, that's actually a very good question. One, it's very easy to access our systems because we have not only direct cloud access that people can go, so if you go to ionq.com, you can easily see what is the cloud access met like process. Mm -hmm. But we are also on Microsoft Azure. We are also on AWS Bracket, which is 
Amazon's product for quantum computing and on Google Cloud. Okay. So if you have any of those three accounts with any of the major public clouds, because we are the only quantum computer available on all public clouds, major public clouds. So this so this computer? Not this one, but like the current systems that are there, Harmony, Aria, and Cortex. Right. Is Microsoft, all, is Google, is... Uh, AWS. AW, right. AW, are Amazon. they going to invest in this? They all actually currently have it as a part of their services. Oh, they so have, all they, them customers. But they don't have this enterprise version. Not yet, because this is coming out in 24. Okay, so, but they have your original yes. chip. They, they can. They don't have it. They access it through our systems. They access so it's your. It's mounted in your facility. Exactly. So you go through AWS. Yes. And now, AWS goes through us. Right. And, right. And like, but a so customer. Customer would use would AWS. Go, AWS and then go back to you. And but they also have the option to go directly through us, which is what customers like. So you're Hyundai, so you're Airbus. competing with Amazon. You're competing True, with but Google. But they're also partners because they right. offer us. So they'll they'll products. bring you customers, but is it less expensive for a startup to come directly to you? It, I think it depends on the kind of problem they're trying to solve. Right. And I think it's beneficial in both directions. Okay. I see. Uh, what about some of the other cloud services? Are they looking to work with you? Which ones? Uh, I think the major ones that are there, like obviously AWS and, and Azure and TCP, is covered. What but about, what about ones, Cloud? What about Cloudflare? Have you been speaking with them? No, we haven't talked to them about it because I don't know if they have like talked to them, but if they are, we are happy to talk. Right, right, yeah. right. I said, can we go over this board and kind of explain this to my uh, viewers? Yeah. Like I think like a lot of it. Uh, yeah. Let's take a look at what these things mean. So this is like Ion Fu Forte Enterprise that system that we announced today. A few things to understand about this one is one, because of the form factor, it integrates with your data center a lot more conveniently. Right. Then you have an AQ35. And when we say AQ35, what it means is the capacity of the number of qubits that we have, which actually perform very well for most algorithms that will result in commercial advantage of sorts. Right. So we have multiple algorithms that we run. So instead of putting like a speed benchmark or a qubit count benchmark, it's useless to have those numbers unless they can actually work for you. Right. And what we do is put these systems through the benchmarks of very complicated algorithms so right. you can actually get a good sense of how many problems can it actually solve. Right. And that is where AQ comes into me. And our AQ capacity is 35. Our current system goes at 29. Right. So this is going to be the next standard. Right. Then number of qubits are 35. And what you're looking at is something called error correction, which is actually something that is a key concern right now in the industry, is how can we actually get to more error corrected qubits. And right. because ours are naturally occurring ions, we already have error correction in some ways sorted for. Right. But then we can use mitigation techniques in order to reduce error significantly. So that effectively renders, I think, again, like a lot of technical terms. Right. But the more important thing for you to understand in this particular case is this makes it a system that integrates with data centers for people to easily access. Right. It's highest performing in terms of fidelity. And at the same time, I think when you're looking at error correction or like errors that actually machine gives you, it's very minimal. If I was Cloudflare, what is this going to cost me? The system? It depends. I think it's. What does it depend on? Uh, it depends on a uh, few things. One is actually the number of qubits you want in the system, but I think at the same time, it's like if you want a modular design, how much access you want on it, how do you want it installed in your premises. Right. What if I wanted it installed in my premises? I was Cloudflare. I wanted my customers just to go directly to my system, my enterprise system. Yeah. What am I going to pay? I O N Q. And you'll need a conversation. I, you'll need to come, but it's it's yeah. negotiable, is what you're saying. Yeah, definitely. And it's a, there's no like a MSRP cap right now right. because I think you have to kind of figure out what are the different things that somebody's going to solve it for, and it's coming in 2024, so we still have a little bit of time to figure out some of those kinks before we actually get into okay. this. Okay. But to be fair, we've already sold one to Switzerland in okay. Quantum Basel. They are going to have one, but okay. each deal is structured in a different way. So how much revenue do you think your company can bring in from this this year? Uh, TBD. I think today we announced AFRL, which is like a massive uh, deal in itself for 25.5 million. 25.5 million. million. And uh, we signed that deal with AFRL. Uh, so with that's it. kind of a, a, an MSRP at this point? Or? Not necessarily, because I think what we're working on is future systems with them. Okay. And, and uh, that press release with more details is going to go out soon. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate your time. Of course. Thank you very Thank much. You.